Welcome back to a brand new PDG Live video. Today I'll be showcasing the Venomoth from 151 with the newly released set Stellar Crown. So that being said, let's get into the decklist. Let's see which new cards we'll be running. So we do run the 4-4 line of the Venom Net as well as Venomoth. This will be our primary attacker for that first attack, the Perplexing Powder. For a single Grass Energy, we get to do 30 base damage. Plus we get to put Confusion on your opponent's active Pokemon as well as your opponent won't be able to play any item cards from their hand during their next turn. So this is going to be an item lock deck and it's meant to disrupt and slow down your opponent and make it very difficult for them to play the game. We also do run the 3-3 line of the Snow Run and Frost Last just to get damage counters into play with the ability Freezing Shroud in between turns. Frost Last will put one damage counter on all Pokemon, both yours and your opponents, that have any abilities except for Frostlass. And we also do run the one copy of the Monkey Dory, which it will get damage counters from Frostlass with the ability Adrenabrain. Once we do get three damage counters or more, and we do have a Dark Energy attached to Monkey Dory, we can move three damage counters from Monkey Dory over to one of your opponent's Pokemon. And moving on to the trainer cards for our ace spec, we do have the neutralization zone where we do get to prevent all damage from your opponent's EXs or Vs done to our single prize Pokemon. We also do run the one copy of the jamming tower which will shut down all tool cards that are in play as well as the one copy of the temple of Sinnoh which will shut down all special energies that are in play. For our supporter cards, we do run the three copies of Arezu, where you can search out your deck for three evolution Pokemon without rule boxes and put them into your hand. We also do have the four copies of Carmine for draw support. We have the two copies of Chloris' Tenacity, where you can search out your deck for a stadium card as well as an energy card. We have the three copies of Iono for draw support as well as hand disruption. We have the three copies of Irida, where you can use this card to search out for a water Pokemon as well as an item card. We have the one copy of Roxanne. And for the energy cards, we just have the one basic dark energy for our Monkey Dory and then six basic grass energies. So those are all of the cards in this deck that I want to talk about and let us see how they'll do in the matches. It looks like they're going first here, so not the most ideal for us. Let's see what they got. They got Fizantipity to open, so... Maybe it's Roaring Moon, Loyal 3, I don't know. Fizantipity is pretty... Pretty much in most decks, but right now, could have to flip the script. So let's see what they do. Ultra Ball. So this looks like it's going to be Palkia V Star. With maybe Terrapagos. Hmm, they do get the squawk ability, so this is definitely a turbo deck. I'm... I get rid of their prime catcher. They put down Dust Skull, another Dust Skull. They pop in for the Froki. Uh, nothing on the heavy ball. Poke gear. Yeah, let's just pass. There's not much we can do.
Interesting, they evolved the Dusclops, but they didn't use it. I'm gonna play here to get the snow run and oh wow, it looks like no the earthen vessel is there, okay. Okay, let's finally do some item locking here. And they do get Dusk Noir. I guess that's what they were saving it for. Let's see, another Rezu. Yeah, they just pass. Wow, that is a clutch grass energy that we just drew. Let's go for the item lock again. Yeah, they just passed. They don't do anything. Another dust skull, yeah, and they just pass again. Okay. Try Poke Gear, Carmine. Let's move damage over. Yeah, well, let's go for the powder again. I feel like there's not much they can do. Yeah, they just pass again. Yeah, we're gonna play Iono here. Okay, they do put down Palky and they use Iono on us, even though we have two cards. I guess it's not a big deal, because it's, we just gain one card.
Yeah, I think we should use Carmine here. Get another Venom off. I know the last one, actually. Yeah, let's get rid of Greninja. Now we knock out the Squawk ability. Yeah, there was really not much they could have done. I feel like they were just a little bit too slow for setting up. Yeah, there goes down the, the squawk. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna retreat out into Palkium. And it is go for rule the region. And poke us up. Yeah, so we don't have to really even attack here. We do just knock out the Froki. See what we get. There's a Venom off. Okay. Kind of feel like it's pretty critical for this deck to go first. Yeah, and they're going first, so it will kind of depend on how well they set up here. I got Dust Skull, so... Mm. Yeah, I'll just pass. I feel like next turn we basically are forced to use Neutralization Zone and then Carmine. I really can't think of anything we can do here. Okay, I got your cloak. So at least no Dragapult just yet. We do have, I guess, a little bit of time here. They do play Arvin. So is this going to be the rare candy for a seal stone? Or maybe nest ball for a seal stone? Yeah, it is nest ball. So maybe they are getting the Rotom V. Yep, there's the Rotom V just on time. Yeah, and there's a Far Seal Stone. So I'm assuming they have either the Rare Candy or the Dragapult in hand, and they're just finding the other card that they need.
No, okay, they go for double Dracloak, so they don't have the rare candy here. Let's see, they played Buddy Puff in... I'm assuming another Duskull and another Dreepy, okay. They play Temple of Sinnoh, which actually is pretty convenient. Horse is Tenacity. Yeah, we definitely do not need that now. So let's play the Neutralization Zone since we really have no choice. Play Carmine. Get rid of Manaphy. Yeah, I think I'm gonna want to keep the Iono here. Cause I'd rather get six cards than five. Let's go for the Perplexing Powder. Let's see how this works out. I'm really hoping they don't have another stadium card because Dragapult doesn't really run too many stadiums. Like the one Temple of Sinnoh seems sounds right. Like Okay, they do get Dusclops down. So they could put 50 damage on one of our Pokemon. Yeah, and they go for the double recon directive, so Iona would be really good to use once they stack up, like, what, 10 cards in their hand now? Nine? Okay. Hmm, they could potentially attack us actually with the Dracloak. They did put two energies on it. So the Curse Blast is going right onto Venomoth. Let's see, what do we draw? Or oh, get from our prizes. Grass energy. That's actually kind of useful. Okay, they evolve up their Dragapult that's on the bench, okay. And I guess they'll just attack with the Dracloak. They play Arvin. Yeah, I really don't think they have another Stadium card. I'm pretty sure if they did, they probably would have played it by now. And whatever item card they get here, we can shut it down, I guess, and use Hyono on it. So I don't know why they'd play Arvin. That's spell and rescue board. Yeah, I think that's a pretty sweet spot we're in actually. It's all just going to kind of come down to this Iona, like, is it going to get us the Venomoth or Ultra Ball or nothing? If it gets us nothing, it'd be pretty bad. Yep, that's pretty bad. There goes the item lock. So the only thing we have protecting us is that neutralization zone, and I can't believe it, we only saw one Venom off, and we're like more than halfway through this deck. So the item lock does break for this turn. Hopefully we get the Rezu and we're back in business.
Yeah, I'm still thinking, like, what other stadiums does Dragapult run other than Temple Sinnoh? Yeah, Artisan is possible, but probably not. Maybe, um, Jamming Headquarters, or the Jamming Tower, I mean, is another one that's possible. They play another Arvin here, so they're getting an item card. I'm positive whatever item card they're getting here, they will use it, so... Night Stretcher, so I'm guessing they're going to use that. Get uh, Energy. No, they're probably going to get the Dust Clops, maybe. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't seem much point of getting the Dust Clops, honestly. They Nest Ball. Or the Radiant Alakazam. So they're probably gonna take. Okay, and that's interesting. They move a damage counter over to Frostlass. Yeah, I'm not sure what they got planned here. And they attach a Fire Energy to Radiant Alakazam. Wow, that is pretty bad. Let's gust up Radiant Alakazam here. Let's use the Iono. Okay, that kind of saved us. We got the energy. We do only run four, in four grass energy, so that's kind of tough. See, Alakazam has Mind Ruler, 20 damage for each card in your opponent's hand. Looks like they just passed here. They didn't do anything. They didn't take action in time. Yeah, they just concede here. Can they have us go first? That's pretty good. It looks like there's some kind of a control deck. Two mulligans. Yeah, they're basically control versus control here. You know, seeing that they're not going to be attacking us, I feel like we should stack up the frost last here. Because they're not doing any damage, so we'll not need more than one Venom off here. And they do get Manaphy into our bench, unfortunately. Another accompanying flute. So they're putting Monkey Dory down as well. Which I'll hope is not lost. Oh, they actually skip out on the Monkey Dory. They did not put it on our bench. I guess they realize it's not ideal at all. Yeah, you may choose. Oh, you know what's good? We can actually knock out our own mana fee with the Frostlass. 
play a red zoo. And that's pretty perfect. We're pretty much where we want to be here. Let's check heavy ball. Snow run. I don't know, do we want to play it? I feel like we might as well. Go for the perplexing powder. Attach handheld fiend. I'm assuming they're gonna boss up main fee here. Uh, it's really not the biggest of deal here. Yeah, they just play Arvin. They get four seal stun and Poke Gear 3.0. Yeah, and they just go for the instant charge. I'm assuming they're going to concede pretty quickly. There's no way they can make this work. Let's see if we can maybe get... Can get the Frost Last. I don't know, maybe a Super Run. Yeah, let's just go for the powder. So now we're putting three damage counters on all of their Pokemon every turn. Yeah, we do knock out our own mana fee here. I'm assuming they're penny back a Snorlax. And what's interesting, we can actually use Counter Catcher here. Because we knocked out our own mana fee here, so we should be pretty good. Yeah, they just instant charge. Yeah, they got 14 cards in their hand. I do think they still have the first seal stone in their hand. Yeah, they do attach it, so... I'm assuming they're gonna search out a penny or something like that. Yeah, they probably did search out for Penny. They put the Rotom back into their hand. And they go into the Snorlax with 60 damage on it. Maybe they have another handheld fan here. They bench Pidgeot V. Okay, they go for the Vanishing Wings. Yeah, I don't know why they put another Snorlax down. Nice, we get to knock out one of their Snorlaxes. So the prize trade now is even. But they still can't use Counter Catcher because we do item lock them.
And there's nothing on the heavy ball. Yeah, let's just go for the powder. We do knock out this Snorlax because yeah, 120. Yeah, they don't have a chance here. That's probably why they spammed those accompanying flutes so early on. Saying there's a night stretcher. They rebench the road on the play Eerie. Which honestly we don't really have much to discard for items. They get rid of our night stretcher and super rod. Yeah. We have two Super Rods in the deck, just in case. Yeah, they just got for instant charge again. Yeah, we're gonna knock out this Snorlax next turn. <laughs> yeah, they just concede here. Not the worst thing in the world, at least we got some pretty good Pokemon to work with. Can obviously use Iona on their next turn to maybe find the energy. Now it is kind of interesting, they're using this single prize Moltres, if it's for no wings. Uh, they have a Magma Basin also. I know, it makes me think it's the Charizard from 151 here. And they Ultra Ball, looks like they got a pretty bad starting hand. They get rid of the Beebrel and the Energy. I'm assuming it's going to be... Oh, wow. It's going to be for the Lumineon V. So it looks like they might just knock us out. If they attack with Moltres, they cannot take a 1 in KO on Venom that Just because of the weakness. They get an Arvin. So I'm assuming maybe they're going to get Arvin Vessel for a Seal Stone here. Yeah, they get the switch and for a seal stone. So they're using their V-Star power now. I'm wondering what they're going to search out for. I'm pretty sure whatever it is, they will use it maybe this turn. Yeah, it's probably the Buddy Poffin. Yeah, there's a Bidoof in Shark to that, so maybe there's Armor Rouge also. Yeah, I feel like we have almost no choice but to use the Iono here. Let's get rid of Manaphy and Iono. And then maybe let's get another Venom then. Nice, we even get the energy, a stadium card, the monkey dory. Let's go for the perplexing powder. Hopefully the confusion slows them down here.
Yeah, they do play Armor Rouge, so... They attach energy to it, they get Beebrel down. That was a really good Iono for that, so... <laughs> they got Beebrel and Armor Rouge on that Iono and three other cards. And Sizers for two. Yeah, let's see. The Confusion, they do hit themselves in Confusion, so that's pretty good. And we do destroy their Crimson Armor here, which is pretty nice. Hmm... Yeah, let's get an Earthen Vessel here. Hopefully the Dark Energy is not prized. Nice, it's in the deck. Yeah, I just want to knock out this Moltres here. Okay, we got Iono. The damage counters are pouring in here. They got four Pokemon with abilities here. See, they go for flip the script. So they do get another energy. They could use the Scorching Bazooka. They will one hit KO us regardless of how many energies they get. Nice, let's use the Night Stretcher for the Venom off here. I'm gonna move damage counters over to the Fizzy and Dippity. That's basically what I want to knock out first. Let's use Iono. Even though they have Beebrel, it's still gonna slow them down at least a little. Hmm, interesting. Another Night Stretcher, I say we use it. Get the venom, venom that out. Let's go for the perplex perplexing powder here. <laughs> okay, they got confusion down, so. And the freezing shroud is activated. So we got a nice 110 on the Fizz Antipathy already, and then 80 on the Lumineon. Let's see, they put Magna Basin down. Play Arvin. So whatever item card they do search out, they won't be able to actually play it. But they did get a hero's cape. Yeah, I don't see much that they can do here. Yeah, they go for the confusion. Hell wow, they do hit themselves again in confusion here. Yeah, I'm moving everything to the Fizz Antipodine. Let's play Chorus. I'm gonna get the Neutralization Zone here. 
because they already played two of their stadium cards. I feel like it might be a good time to play it. Like, obviously, I don't know how many stadium cards they run, but... It's a very good chance they might just have two. Nice, we get rid of Bibril. Does he get knocked out? There's a Carmine. Ooh, interesting. They do play the Radiant Zard. Which a Radiant Zard, it doesn't get affected by the neutralization zone. Hmm. Says that don't have a rule box. I'm pretty sure Radiant Zard will be able to attack us if they do. It looks like they're retreating out of Armor Rouge. They go into Radiant Zard. Yeah, and they just pass. Okay. Yeah, I believe we just completely win this game here. Because we knock out the Lumineon, and then the next turn, we get the Physiandipity. So it doesn't even matter what we do here now. Let's go for the attack. Yeah, and there goes the Physiandipity as well. Yeah, and those are the last two prizes. So yeah, Carmine and Temple of Sinno. Nice. Well, those are all the games. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.